In this problem, we have a sequence, at least the first four terms of a sequence. And we're supposed to find from this information here the 67th term of this sequence. And the first thing I do when I look at a sequence is, is try to look at the difference between uh, each of the terms. So 3 to 9, that's a difference of 6. 9 to 15, 6. 15 to 26. OK, so this is a simple arithmetic sequence. All we're doing is adding 6 to get to the next term. So that part's easy. But to get to the 67th term, I guess I could do that. I could keep adding 6s. That's a lot of 6s to add. Luckily, there is a method where we can find a simpler and quicker way to do this. We're going to write out these examples according to the mathematical operations that we're doing to get to these items, to get to these terms in the sequence. And then we're going to see if we can examine those to make a general formula. And if we get a general formula, then we can apply that to find this 67th or really any term uh, of the arithmetic sequence. OK. so. Let's write this out. I've got the first term that's just 3. My second term is 3 plus 6. So I'm not going to write this as 9, because what I'm doing to get from one to another is adding 6. So I'm going to write that as 3 plus 6. My third term, then, I'm going to write as 3 plus 6 plus 6, because we started at that first term and we added 6 twice. And likewise, the fourth term, 3 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6. Now, one part of this stays the same. The 3 always stays the same. This part changes. We're adding another 6 every time. So I'm going to rewrite this, and I'm going to make it simpler by using multiplication instead of adding. So when you add three 6s together, it's the same as 6 times 3. So this is really 3 plus 6 times 3. This is really 3 plus 6 times 2. This is 3 plus, and actually, I'm going to write that as 6 times 1. I mean, that's the same as 6, right? And this, I'm going to write as 3 plus 6 times 0, because 6 times 0 is 0. So 3 is 3 plus 6 times 0. When you write it out this way, you should begin to see a pattern here. It's this number that goes up by 1 every time. And for the first element, that number is 0. For the fourth element, that number is 3. For the third element, the number is 2. So this number, this important number, is always 1 less than the number of the term. We usually use n for the number of the term. So the first term, that's where n equals 1. So I could think of this number as n minus 1, because it's 1 less than that term. And if I think of it that way, I can write a general formula where I say each term equals 3 plus 6 times n minus 1. Now let's just think that through and test a few. If it's the first term, I'd put 1 in for n, because n represents which term it is. First term, that's 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. I get 3 plus 6 times 0. That gives me 3. If it's the fourth term, I'd put a 4 in here. 4 minus 1 is 3. I get six, 3 plus 6 times 3. That's exactly what I've got for this fourth term. So this is our general rule. All right, we're almost there. Now to find the 67th term, all I have to do is put in 67 for n. So this would become 3 plus 6 times 67 minus 1. And that is 3 plus 6 times 66. And let's see, 6 times 66, that's 396. So 3 plus 396 is 399. And that is our answer. The cool thing about a formula like this is that it, you know, it saves time over trying to calculate by hand the 67th term. I mean, what if you were asked to find the millionth term of a sequence? You'd never have enough time to calculate it by hand. But if you use this formula, you could put in any number. You could put in the 100 billionth term. Just put in 100 billion for n and do the calculation if your calculator goes that high. So that's how to find a specified term in an arithmetic sequence.